It's your brother, Larry Adeneko, welcoming you to the Really, Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God, all powered by the Pastor Larry Adeneko Center for Exaspiration, the PLACE. <music> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gem soon upon the crown of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on why people become poor, coming from Romans chapter 15, verses 22 to 27. Let's share a word of prayer together and we get into it together. Father in heaven, we bless your great name of God and give you all the praise, all the glory for your help to us here at all times. You are so much there. Lord, we thank you and we ask of God and receive by faith that same help this morning in Jesus' name holy name we pray amen and amen and amen hallelujah all right <clears throat> so romans 15 22 for this reason i also have been much hindered from coming to you but now no longer having a place in this part and having a great desire this many years to come to you whenever i journey to spain i shall come to you for i hope to see you on my journey and be helped on my way there by you if First, I may enjoy your company for a while, but now I'm going to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. For it pleased those in Macedonia and Achaia to make certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem. It pleased them indeed, and they are their debtors. For if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister to them in material things. Okay? let's uh, go back now it says for this reason for which reason you remember that we closed the other time we came to the book of romans uh with the fact that in ministry people have personal policies in ministry at times you know this has nothing to do with scripture it has nothing to do with uh, you know uh, any other thing it's just a personal policy now his personal policies they have not allowed him it says i've been much hindered for this reason i've been much hindered yeah now even though i have been longing to come to you i've not been able to come to you because of my policy and now having no place anymore in these areas well then uh, my policy no longer holds because there's no other place in this area you know where i can minister it is good it is good time now to come to you so you see in ministry people have policies and i, I can see that so this is a problem in recent times. I'm sorry to be going on this, but you'll just bear with me. It may not apply to a lot of us, and that's why I'm apologizing, but it will apply to some minister or the other. I find out that some of us are doing things just because it's become its vogue or that some other person has done it or some people are doing it. So what's your own personal policy? It's not because something is vogue. It's not because something is trending. It's not because somebody has done something that you also would do it. You must have your own personal policy, you know, in ministry. That's what happened. We find out that with Paul, and this is not the only one. He has up to two, three policies, you know, that, you know, he, he came up with somewhere in the course of his writing. Okay. One of his, um, uh, one of them is refusing to marry. It was his personal policy, you know. Uh, the other one has to do with this. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. You know, take anything from from anybody in this environment as I preach the gospel. It's another personal policy. You must have some. Pol that is not to say it is not in the world that um, you know you should take care of the minister. It's just his policy for this area. That's my policy. We must be people who have policies and principles and not just do things because they are popular because uh, somebody else has done it. Oh, that's what everybody is doing. So what? you must have your own policy praise god sorry 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 okay then let's go back he says now having no longer place in this path so i have been hindered so even though he had a great urge to go to go and visit these people he brought himself under control under his policy policy derived from the word police is police c in other words you police yourself and make sure that you you behave yourself according to these principles praise god so he did that he refused to go he stood it aside okay until it was you know now in line with policy and then yeah he went ahead and you know went to visit them and he said and when i um, when I journey to Spain, I will come to you. I hope to see you on my journey and be helped on my way by you. If first I may enjoy your company for a while. So when I'm coming to you, when I get there on my way to Spain, I'll spend a couple of uh, some time with you people, and I'm I'm really looking forward to a fantastic time, you know. But then he went on to say, "You are the ones who are going to now fund my the the rest of my journey." To where i was going that's what he said you are going to fund he says that you'll be to be helped on my way there by you on my way to spain you are the guys who are going to fund that journey and we learned something there 
Paul had no inhibitions. He had, you know, in asking them for financial support. Okay? And that tells us something about relationships. <clears throat> when you build relationships, these things um, enable you to um, say things or ask for things without inhibitions, without, um, you know, feeling anyhow about it because you have built a relationship over time. I want to say to somebody this morning, build relationships. Relationships are very, very important. And when you do them, they, they enable you to do things without um, feeling um, awkward. Yeah, without feeling awkward, without feeling, um, oh, how do I say this now? No, you have built a relationship and possibly or to say to them, oh, you are the ones who are going to fund the rest of my trip. He said it, yeah, just like that, casually, because he has built a relationship. Praise God. Okay, and that relationships, when you have built them, they help you to be able to, I don't want to say take for granted, but at least you, you, you are able to relate freely. Yeah, freely, without, uh, with a lot of liberty, related to, to the people with whom you have built a relationship. So let's go on. I said, but now I'm going to Jerusalem to minister to the saints because it has pleased people from Macedonia, that Philippians area, and Achaia, that Corinthians area, you know, to make certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem. This is interesting. It says, it has pleased the people in these areas to make certain contribution for the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. And Paul was the one who was going to help them to deliver, to, you know, to the people in Jerusalem. We see two things there. Number one, it says the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. I've said here a number of occasions that certain scriptures that make me fear. One of them, I mean, that, make me, that scare me a little bit. One of them is the poor you always have with you honestly and you know i'm titling this why why people remain poor or become poor or get poor or whatever you will always the poor among the brethren in jerusalem remember that we preach prosperity a lot still in spite of all that some people are going to remain poor why let us look at those things this morning apart from the fundamental things like uh laziness <clears throat> anybody who is lazy should expect to be poor you know, and, um, and, and, and what else? Not listening to advice, um, sticking to your own way, not getting information, you know, about those things are very, very basic. There are some other ones that people do not often talk about, and I like to call them cardinal points of, of poverty. Number one is inertia. Inertia is that thing that makes you reluctant to go, reluctant to take a first step, reluctant to, you know, uh, you begin to postpone and to procrastinate. It's, it's, it's something that can uh, <clears throat> lead to poverty, and it's one of of the reasons why some people will be poor because they just will not go that inertia you know is too much for them and that's one number one another one is what i call the blame game when you fail to take responsibility you are blaming some other thing or some other person you know for your situation for what is happening actually you see uh it's if only you know and all that <laughs> you know the blame game is not going to allow you to move and those are the one of the reasons why brethren are poor and it's not our portion it's not supposed to be so in jesus mighty name may the lord help us Another one is um, being afraid to take a risk. <clears throat> being afraid to take risk risk phobia some people they just cannot venture they cannot take risks and believe me it's going to it's going to you know le lead you to poverty that's not the will of god for you and finally when you uh, eat your seed god provides bread for the eater and seed for the sower that's it but when you convert your seed to bread and eat it well then sorry uh, because god has provided for you to sow but you have eaten it now those are some of the things that make people poor may god help us that's why some Poor saints in Jerusalem, you know, existed and they always will exist. May God help us in Jesus' name. Number two that we see there, it says that, um, um, and indeed, you know, they are, they are debtors for the Gentiles have been partakers of spirituality. Their duty is also to minister to them in material things. Yeah, that's what it said. It said they are debtors. Okay, before, before I go into that, I see something here very quickly and then I'll move on because our time is, you know, really spent now. The people in the branches and outstations in this story, seem to be more comfortable than the people in the headquarters. Have you noticed it's usually the other way around? Because all the outstations send money to the headquarters and headquarters have so much money. But these people in the outstations and, and branches, they seem to have more money than the headquarters. And they were now, you know, blessing the headquarters people. Very interesting. I think it's a food for thought for some of us. That's, that's one. And then the other bit I was going to... Uh, um, 
emphasize that if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, their duty it is also to minister to them in material things. In other words, when somebody has been your spiritual minister, you have a duty, a responsibility to minister to the person materially. That's the Bible. We don't see it only here in Romans because Paul was the one who was saying it here in Romans. The same Paul spoke about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 11. I don't have uh, too much time to really uh, go to that one now, but if, you know, no much time to go to it now because our time is fast spent. But you see, it's a principle that when people minister to you spiritual things, it is your responsibility to requite them with, with your material things, to bless them materially. That's what it says. They are debtors because you see, if it's uh, their duty, if they, they're partakers of the spiritual things, their duty is also to minister to them in material things, honestly. And um, I think it's something that we should uh, uh, talk about and emphasize. Some people are not going to like me for talking about this, but well, it is in the Bible. So, um, yes, I've just seen that First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. If we have sown spiritual things for you, is it a great thing if we reap your material things? Yeah, that's it. So, it is scriptural. By, by the matter of two witnesses, we have established it this morning that you have a responsibility to requite you know uh, materially those who sow or bless your life spiritually i think we have had enough this morning our time is really really gone we will um, maybe overlap if need be and then go on and say some more things the next time we come around in the book of romans thank you very much for being there the lord bless you thank you